Welcome to uh, an episode that I have been asked about a lot. You know, we've been talking a lot with the team on mastering how to sell the dream, right? Working with our mentor and getting really good at that. And we always get asked this question uh, that honestly, it's a very valid question. And I think every single person's been at this point. The question is, the title of the episode, how do you sell the dream when... You're living the nightmare. It's a very relatable cr- question. It really is. It, it really <laughs> is. I feel like everybody, unless you were born into money and you already have money, I feel like anytime you try to start something, you're trying to paint this picture and this vision and this image of, of what life looks like or what your company is going to provide when there's this almost feeling of lack of congruency, like imposter syndrome, right? Mm -hmm. Because inside you're like, dude, I'm trying to pay my bills. I haven't even made any money. I have no teammates. I have no clients. I'm not even licensed yet. Like everything freaking sucks. And I'm supposed to sell the dream and enroll people into this vision. Like how in the world do I do that? That's really hard in the beginning. And I think we have some good tips and pointers for you, some things to consider. You know, as especially during, you know, well, I'm not sure when this episode is going to come out this week. Yeah, this this Sunday. There you go. Yes. But um, the holiday season, right? You're seeing a lot of people. People are asking how you're doing. And <laughs> the answer really shouldn't be trash, right? We want to avoid that because that's not helping you sell the dream. It's not helping you move your business or your life forward. Right. So let's talk about some of these tips. What you got? Yeah. First off, is it okay to sell the dream while you're living the nightmare? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. That's not you being a phony. That's not you being fake. That's not you uh, faking it until you make it, right? Which a lot of people think is, you know, I got to fake it till I make it. It's really, I don't believe it's any of those things. I think it's you being locked into where you're going. I remember in the beginning of business when... I had landed one of the biggest recruits of my career, right? And I remember, the, I remember the phone call. I had gotten her business card. I called her and I said, hey, Ethel. Her name was Ethel Rucker. I said, Ethel, how are you? This is Jay. And she's like, oh, hey, Jay. And she was in real estate. And, uh, and I remember I said, how's business going? I know for most realtors, you're either killing it or there's a chance you're getting killed, one of the two. Mm-hmm. And her exact words were, oh my gosh, it's terrible. To be honest, it's terrible. How about you? And my response was, oh my gosh, you wouldn't believe me if I told you. We, we just had a record month. And in my mind, we did. It was the record worst freaking financial month of my life as an adult. But it, I was just like, man, you wouldn't believe me if I told you. Because the reality is, is I was over here selling the dream. And if I told her the truth, she wouldn't believe me. Like, really? You're doing that bad? But it was terrible. I wasn't killing it. But I was locked into where I was going in the future. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and as an entrepreneur, if you want to go somewhere big, you're thinking in the future, right? You're living in today. You're working in the present. But my mentality and my vision was locked in where I was going. Yeah, that's a great point. You have to have, it's it's very similar to having a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset. And there's a great book about it. I think it's pretty much called growth versus fixed mindset or vice versa, right? But that's the concept is, are you in the mindset where this is the best it's going to get? Nothing's going to change. I'm Mm. not going to change. I'm not going to grow. My business is not going to grow. And you're going to be stagnant in that position or... Are you, like Jay said, looking towards the future mm-hmm. and getting excited about that? And even if it's not your reality right now, how amazing is it that it can be and that it will be if you put the right. work in? That's the whole, that's the whole thing. Um, everything is focused on getting better. Remember that even if right now you're behind on your bills, <clears throat> I really want to lock in on this because this is where a lot of people are. I've ran so many meetings this week and this is where so many people are. Right now, I'm behind on my bills. 
I'm buried in credit card debt. My cash flow sucks. I'm not making money. I have no momentum. My friends and family aren't supporting me in business. My spouse hates the business and thinks it's it's a bunch of BS. I, I haven't brought home any checks yet. I haven't landed any clients yet. And, I, and by the way, I have no momentum and I can't see that anywhere in my future. I've got nothing going for me right now that would, would even justify me selling the dream. In that spot, then what? Well, the reality is, is that in that spot, that's a great place to be. That's the beginning. That's the beginning of something that'll be big. That's the beginning of something that'll be great. Momentum has to start from somewhere. And it's okay if momentum starts from zero. So learning how to sell the dream, even when everything in life points to the nightmare, that's the skill, right? That's the art. Every big company, every big success story, every rags to riches story, all of those started from someone being in a bad spot. In mm -hmm. fact, most people who blew up a company and became very wealthy, it started from them at one of what could have been their lowest points in their life. So the bottom is the perfect place to begin. And living the nightmare is the perfect place to start selling the dream because otherwise you get stuck in the nightmare. Mm -hmm. Just like you said, think about all, you know, think about all these successful companies that you've heard of, right? And the founders that we are well aware of, right? Steve Jobs with Apple and, you know, you have Tesla, you have Uber, these common, like really successful, you know, quote unquote companies. Think of day one when that idea popped into their head. You know, if they're talking about it to someone, they're like, hey, get this. Like instead of taxis, anyone can be a taxi. Right. And you can get in your car <laughs> And there's going to be this thing on your phone and app and it's going to have you pick up someone and trying to explain all that while currently, I'm not sure about this person's particular story, but not being in a good financial situation. Right. Right. But you still need to project that image with all the excitement for the future. Yeah. You got to sell the dream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So let's talk about it. First of all, how do you sell the dream? Um, remember you're, where, where you're going is obviously different than where you are. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point. Yes. You're trying to get to somewhere and create something that doesn't necessarily exist today. And so you first, I believe, have to buy in to where you're going yourself. You know, I've got to, I've got to believe it. I had a conversation with uh, one of our teammates a couple of months ago. She couldn't, she couldn't land anything. She couldn't recruit anyone. She couldn't, she was struggling. And uh, I said, I'll tell you why. You're so negative. All you do is complain all day. And her, her response was really, it was really, it was really valid. She said, but I don't complain when I'm on calls. Hmm. And I said, true, but you're also not inspired when you're on calls, right? You're not operating from a place of, of vision and future and, and faith. You're not operating from a place of expectation of success, right? You're expecting people to say no. You're expecting things not to work. You're reciting scripts. You're not, you're not selling the dream. You're just saying words. People hear you, but they don't feel it. They hear you, but they don't believe you. You know, and I told her, I said, I want you to start, get a gratitude journal and like start doing your daily gratitude. Start saying your affirmations every day. And uh, in 45 days, she completely changed that around. She's landed 10 new teammates. And I asked her, I said, what's the difference? And she said, I got really good at selling the dream. Her expectation changed. I think that's part of selling the dream. Absolutely. Expecting uh, things to work. A lot of this is mindset, right? Yeah. That's where it starts so off much. at. It, it has to start off from your thoughts. And then comes the tangible, hey, this is how I'm going to communicate it. Right. And it doesn't mean that you're not struggling or you're not feeling all these bad emotions. It just means that when you are speaking with other people that you could potentially want to enroll into your vision, into your big dream, that you're expressing it adequately. Right. And so you're, for those other feelings, right, those reality feelings that you're dealing on a daily basis, it is still important for you to discuss those and for you to have, you know, an outlet for those. But the outlet's got to be somewhere where it's safe, and you're protecting your dreams, meaning you're going to talk to someone that, like your coach, right? Someone who gets where you want to go, believes that you can get there, and has the roadmap for you to continue to follow, even if you're unsure yourself. Right. 
Because if you talk to other people who don't necessarily understand what you're trying to do, they care about you. They're going to say, if it's that hard, quit. Right. If it's that hard, just fix what's broken. So if you're struggling financially, forget about owning a business, get a job. That's the thing about being inspired. That's why I think being inspired is the most important part Mm -hmm. of selling the dream while you're living the nightmare of enrolling of, of, uh, there's a difference between recruiting and enrolling, right? Enrolling means I, I'm, I'm, I'm putting people in a place where they're inspired, inspired in spirit, right? Which means like you're expecting things to work. You're expecting things to go good. You're optimistic about the future. So you could be dirt broke and still sell the dream, right? So I, that's why I told her, I said, hey, I want you to do these affirmations and gratitudes in the morning before you call anyone. Because it puts you into a different space in your state, right? Like, like just the, there's a magic to it where now she's in a really optimistic, excited, looking into the future place. And so when you're doing calls now or you're, or you're, you're, you're selling the dream, right? You believe it. Mm-hmm. And so I'm expecting people to feel that. You know, I told this story on training a couple of days ago about my client who, um, one of my good friends who's he's the number one Marine Corps recruiter in the entire country. And I asked him and I said, I said, can I ask you, um, first of all, like, is it competitive? He's like, yeah, there's a whole scoreboard. Mm. And, and he's, he's 40% ahead of, what, of who's number two. And so I asked him, I said, how, how are you so good at that? How are you so good at, at recruiting these kids to go and like sign their life to the military? And he's like, oh my gosh. He's like, because I believe in the military. The military saved my life. The military changed my whole life. I, I had nothing growing up. I've never met my dad. My mom was a single mom. She works three jobs to pay bills. And when we got to, when I was getting to the end of high school, I knew when my best friend was going to go be a nurse and another one wanted to be a lawyer, I knew that we didn't have the money for that. And I didn't know what I was going to do. I was going to try to go to a trade school or do something. And he's like, this guy walked on campus in a uniform, and it instantly caught my eye. And I started talking to the guy, and the guy started telling me, like, hey, man, you know, if you come in the Marine Corps, we're going to give you a place to live. We're going to give you health insurance for the rest of your life. We're going to give you benefits. We're going to pay for your education if you want to go to school. You could do that while you're in the Marines. You'll get to travel the world. You'll get to go to Japan. You know, you're going to get to do all these things. You'll have a brotherhood. You'll, you'll make friends that become family. Like, you'll, you'll, you'll be someone that your family and your kids and your future could be proud of. You don't have to have money to go be a doctor to have all that. And he's like, I signed right on the spot. He's like, as soon as I turned 18, signed. And so I said, so how do you recruit all the kids? He's like, I tell them that story. Mm-hmm. So this guy, like, he really believes in the Marine Corps so much and then when he sits with these kids, he sells the dream. He goes, hey, let me tell you, man, the Marine Corps saved my freaking life. I had nothing before this, you know? And so he, he said, he joked, he said, I'm every mom's worst nightmare because if I talk to your kid, they're joining the military. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what's the difference though? He's selling the dream. Mm-hmm. He's painting a picture, right? So number one, is, I think, is you got to be inspired and you got to really believe it. Yes. Okay. Number two on selling the dream when you're living the nightmare is uh, whether you're confident or not. You you had told me before, I think you had read a book. I don't remember what, five, five second rule or what was it? Mm-hmm. Was it the five second rule? I think so. Where he, you just have to have confidence yes. for like 30 seconds. Just like a moment of courage. Mm-hmm. That's it. Five Snap seconds. into state. Talk about that real quick. It applies to a bunch of different things. But for example, one of the things that I had to get used to when I started in business is just making phone calls, talking to people I've never spoken to before and trying to make a good impression and trying to get to know them, all that good stuff. The most nerve wracking part about making phone calls is like pushing the green button, right? The call button. Mm -hmm. Um, And so the five second rule is, is when you know you should do something you do it within five seconds because you just have to be brave for five seconds. And after that, Hey, are they going to answer? Are they going to not? It's really out of your control, but you took, took that first step by calling. Same thing with, if you're trying to develop a habit, if you're trying to get up in the morning, when your alarm first goes off, five second rule, your alarm goes off within five seconds, you're out of bed. Mm. 
So it takes us just a quick moment of courage to start. It's making that snap mm. decision. Got it. That's, I would say, a very, very, uh, very, very big step in selling the dream. You know, selling the dream is uh, is something that I think people get scared of because when they think oh, I sell the dream, they think money, mm-hmm. right? And while, and we'll go through a quick example of how how I think you sell the dream, but it's, it has nothing to do with money, right? It's just. Making the decision, all right, I'm going to be tough. I'm going to be brave. I'm going to sell my dream, which is telling your story. It's not you talking about how you just bought 10 Ferraris or you walking past, you know, someone else's Ferrari taking a picture and then, you know, posting on Instagram. Like that stuff, I don't think sells anybody the no. dream. What, what the dream is, right, when you have the courage, right, I'm inspired. I expect things to work for me. I'm going to take this, boom, five seconds of courage and I'm going to do it. And then, and then really what it is, is it's being authentic. It's being genuine. See, a lot of us, we think, well, how do I sell the dream? My friends know I'm broke. You know, I, I feel like if I go post this post on Instagram about how I'm going to make all this money this year and I just, my cousin's going to see it and I just borrowed money from my cousin. Right. <laughs> well, because you're thinking about selling the dream wrong. That's not yeah, the dream. It's not, it's not about the, the money. It's, it's not, not about the money. It's about where you're going. And more importantly, what's relatable to people. It's like, hey, right. I'm doing something important. I have, I'm passionate about this. I'm yes. helping people. Yes. I just sat down with this family and you know, was able to help change their lives in X, Y, Z way. Well, how are, how are you teaching people about money when you don't have any? I mean, d- there's doctors who are sick, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, right? Every psychologist also has a psychologist. There's, you can relate to people who have struggled financially because you have also struggled financially. If you're not doing well financially, you're trying to teach others. As long as you are doing something to get yourself out of there, you can also teach people how to do things to get themselves out of that position as well. You don't have to already be wealthy. And whether your friends and family, by the way, the only ones who know you don't have any money is your friends and family. If you've told them you don't have any money, Mm -hmm. that's irrelevant, right? You're learning how to sell the dream. They will watch but you're learning how to sell a dream for the people you haven't met yet. Mm-hmm. You know, so so where you're going, as Ronnie said, is the most important thing. Selling the dream is not selling your commissions. It's not photoshopping your CEO's commission and posting it and pretending it's yours. That's not selling the dream. Selling the dream, as Ronnie said, is passion. It's you telling your story and and telling it in a way where people listen. Because they feel it and they believe you and you move your you you know, there's some there you're you're moving people when they hear you talk. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. And so we'll give you a quick little formula on it. Uh, number one, if you're in our industry, I'll just give you an example, but this applies for anything, no matter what it is. Number one is selling the fundamental goodness of the company that you are a part of or of the company that you started. Why are you looking at me? Hmm? Why are you looking at me weird? No, I'm not. I'm just okay. so pretty. Yeah. Okay. So that's number one. It's sell. It's selling. It's just selling. Like I really believe in what I'm a part of. So f- when my buddy is telling the story about how he recruits people to the Marine Corps, what is he selling? He's selling the Marine Corps. Mm-hmm. I freaking love this military. I love the, the Marine Corps. <laughs> I love the Marine Corps. You cut me open, I bleed green. Like he literally told me that. He's like, "This is my life. There is nothing you can say to change it." By the way, he pointed out to me. That people don't join the military to become rich. Right. So therefore, him selling the dream has nothing to do with a paycheck. Nothing. Right? It was all, man, I get to be a part of something. I get to wear a uniform. I get to put a license plate on my car that says United States Marine. Like, these are things he told me that he freaking loves about the Marine Corps. Mm-hmm. The friendships, the relationships. So, so anything that you're selling when you're talking to your cousin, you're talking about the place that you're talking about your workplace. If you just started a real estate company, you're talking about your real estate company. Let me tell you why I love the people in my company. Let me tell you why I love my leadership. Let me tell you why I love my coach. Let me tell you why I love the environment, the atmosphere. I love that it's a place where I could grow. I love that it's a place where I could become a better person. People believe in me. You know, people help me. I've got a trainer who takes care of me that really cares about my future. You know, it's stuff like that. That stuff sells the dream. Mm -hmm. What else sells the dream? Mission. Okay, so tell me about the mission. Mm -hmm. So why should people care that you're in business? 
That's what the mission is, right? Mm -hmm. So the mission, the crusade, the purpose, the problem we solve, right? So for example, um, anything like in our industry, we, we teach people how to manage their money. Well, we got to sell that. You know, mm -hmm. How do I sell that? Hey, listen, by the way, you can have no clients and still sell this. How do I sell it? Let me, let me just tell you why I love what I do. When I started learning about finance, this could be a conversation with your uncle. Listen, uncle. Yeah, I know I don't have any money. Why do you think I love this so much? When I started learning this stuff, I started realizing all the reasons why no one in our family has money. <laughs> you want to know why? Because... Because this industry I'm a part of doesn't traditionally cater to teach broke people how to become unbroke. Instead, they're going to go find a guy with money. Well, we don't have money. Let's not pretend. Okay, none. Of, we have not had money. My mom and dad don't have money. My mom and dad weren't rich. So nobody was knocking on my mom and dad's door going, hey, let me, let me uh, teach you how to manage that uh, $22 that's in your checking account. You know, that was never, that's not a financial firm's target client. That's why I love what I do so much. When I sat down with them, I didn't know any of this stuff. I didn't have life insurance. I didn't know how to put my son through college without him having to take out, you know, $150,000 in student loans to finish his continuing education. Like, I didn't, I didn't know any of that stuff. And now I'm learning all of those things and I'm able to teach people that. I don't spend my money the same. I don't save my money the same. I don't think about money the same. And I sure as heck am in a position now where I don't have to make money the same anymore either. So I'm talking about why I love my company or why I love whatever I'm a part of. And I'm talking about why I love what we do for people. Mm -hmm. If I'm a real estate agent, you know, hey, let me tell you why I love what I do for people. I really want to help people find a home. I think it's people's dream to own a home. And most people would own a home if they believed that they could qualify to own a home. My job, my mission is to find those people and show them how to get prepared so that they could buy a home. You know, and it, 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 I mean, anything. You sell the mission of why you exist. Yeah, that's powerful. What else? You want to add to that? Nope. That's no? perfect. All right. Well, I'm going to tell you the last thing then on how you <laughs> sell the dream. As you can tell, I'm fired up about yes. selling the dream. I don't think anyone sells a dream better than me. That's why. I really like, man, when my buddy told me the Marine Corps story, I was like, oh, how do I join the Marines? You know, I was fired up. Don't do that. Yeah, I know. Probably that enthusiasm will last for one hour of boot camp and it would be done. Mm -hmm. But the last thing is you talk about where you're going, right? You talk about why you love. I'm just giving you an example. Talk about why you love um, what your opportunity or whatever you're doing is going to do for you or what it's going to do for them. You know, so for me, I, 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 to this day, when I meet somebody, like I was talking to a good friend of mine at the gym the other day who I've known like 14 years. I tried to recruit her 14 years ago. We're revisiting the conversation now. And, um, and she told me, she's like, I need to make more money. She's like, you got to help me. I was like, okay, how do you want me to help you? She's like, send me clients. I was like, okay, for what? She's like, who want their hair done? You know, they want... Um, microdermabrasion, they want any, any like any any um health and like beauty stuff, right? And uh, I was like, okay, cool. And then I was like, why don't you just do something new? And she's like, like what? I said, why don't you get in business with me? She's like, um, okay, well, well how? I don't still don't even know what you do. And I was like, well, so let me tell you why I love my company. You know, and I started selling her the dream on the environment and what we do for people and all that stuff. And then I talked about what's in it for me because I know it's the stuff she wants too. I said, you know, I could work from home. I could make $100,000, you know, a month from home. I'm in control of my income. I could make as much money as I want. If I want to double my income this year, I could do that. You know, the cost of living is going up 4 to 5% every year. Taxes are scheduled to go up. And jobs are not giving 4 to 5% raises every year. So for your average person who's just an employee, who works a job, who doesn't have an opportunity to control their income, it's getting harder and harder for them to fill two things. Number one, their grocery cart. And number two, their gas tank. Mm -hmm. And if you just work a job with a pretty much fixed income, you're, you feel that. Yeah. I, don't know, I don't notice it because I'm in control of my income. So I don't really notice it because my, my income's not 
staying at 4,000 a month or 3,500 a month or 6,000 a month. But for your everyday person, they, they notice it. And so I told her, I said, I'm in control of my income. I can make double this year if I want. I can make triple this year. I got to work twice as hard and maybe a little bit smarter. The fact that I could do it from home, I could get on Zoom. I don't have to leave. I don't have to leave my kids at home. I don't have to go to, to work for 40 hours a week and not see my family. I could travel and still make money. I could live in another country and still make money. You know, whatever it may be, um, you sell the dream about what, what you can get from what you're doing. Yeah, it's powerful. It's a powerful combination. And I told her, I said, here, watch this. You know, Tuesday night at six o'clock, can you be free? You know, and I'll put, her in, I'll put her in a meeting where I get her an overview of our company. And so my point is, is that nowhere in there do you have to talk about how you're going to become rich. No. You know, and you got a chance to be rich, you know. And I, I think that money, money is important. But I think if you lead with passion, as Ronnie said earlier, and you, you genuinely talk from the heart of why you love what you're doing and why you love where you're going... That's what moves people. Yeah. Be vulnerable. Be real about what you love and what's important to you, and people will relate to it. Now, back to our original thought. Can you do all that while you're living the nightmare? Absolutely. Heck yeah. You got to sell yourself on where you're going. Mm -hmm. You got to sell yourself. It doesn't matter how much money is in your bank account. It doesn't matter how far behind you are in debt. And it doesn't matter how much you've sucked at what you're trying to do up until this point. If you change the way you communicate, you take your story and you practice it and you learn how to tell it, people will start to listen. And, um, and, and no one could argue with you. No one's going to be like, yeah, respectfully, that's all bullshit. You know, <laughs> when, you're, when you're talking about your dream and your passion, Feelings, right? Yeah. Oh, you want to help people? Bullshit. Like, that, that, that's, that's not the response you're going to get. The response you're going to get is instead like, oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. That that sounds that all sounds good actually. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and then what happens from there doesn't really matter, but the point is is that's how you sell the dream when you're living the nightmare. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, seal the deal, huh? <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much for watching. We greatly appreciate it. Hopefully this is helping someone because that is why we do this. We want to help people um, especially if you are a young entrepreneur or you're late to the game, we just want to help. And so comment, like, subscribe, all the good stuff. And, you know, shout out to our producer, DJ Just J. He makes music. So check him out on all streaming and social Waiting platforms. Waiting for him to make some new music. But you can check out the music he already made. Yeah. <laughs> we like it. All right. All right. Bye, guys. Thank you, guys. <laughs>